Hello. Um, hello, everyone. It is a great pleasure to be here in this uh, unusual time uh, in order to discuss how the technology and innovations uh, during the pandemic are, he uh, are helping people and also businesses to adapt and to survive sometime. Uh, my name is Vanya Manova and I'm country manager of MasterCard for Bulgaria, North Macedonia, Albania and Kosovo. And I'm here with uh, Armen Metavusian, who is um, chief commercial officer of DBI Bank, with um, Eva Vucheva, who is a founder of one very interesting uh, fintech uh, company, maybe more tech fashion than tech. <laughs> fashion tech, <laughs> okay, named uh, Impact ID, and Evgeny Urdanov, who is uh, chief digital officer in CloudCard, one of the biggest e-com platform in Bulgaria, if not the biggest one, he will uh, correct me if sure. I'm wrong. Yeah, not a problem. Okay, so. Um, it's not a secret to anyone that we live in a very challenging times and uh, many people and businesses um, actually had uh, been um, challenging to change their life, uh, their, uh, the way they work, the way they interact, etc. And here we see how the technology and innovation can help them uh, in this uh, process. Many businesses actually uh, had to uh, react immediately and to go digital even overnight in order to be able to um, keep working and serving and keeping the relationship with their customers. We see the exponential growth of e-commerce, of digital services, and uh, fortunately, we as a company, MasterCard, were very well prepared about this because we had all the technologies, all the solutions in place. And I believe that all of you would agree that uh, after many years, contactless payments and uh, even mobile payments are becoming the new and normal way to pay. But today we will be talking about um, another channel, digital channel, which is uh, e-commerce, how the trends are um, changing, how um, actually um, the businesses are reacting, and uh, how the customer um, behavior is changing and how actually technologies are helping um, this uh, customer behavior to be um, well met by all businesses. I'm going to share only one number and then I'll leave the floor to our um, panelists to share their experience and their um, opinion. But uh, during the pandemic, 17% of Bulgarians have purchased online for the very first time. 40% of um, Bulgarians have, purcha have purchased uh, online things for the first time. I mean, different things than usual before. And here, I will leave the floor to um, Evgeny uh, to share more um, data about this and to share not only data, but some particular cases which will prove how the technology is helping the businesses and the people. Yes. Thank you, Vanya. Thank you, everybody, for, for particip participating in this event, of course, and uh, to all our viewers um, for, for, I know, keeping tabs on everything that's coming up and working in the e-commerce field. And for instance, I would like to speak uh, really briefly about the changes that happened this year as opposed to the previous years that were um, back in, in the 2010s uh, that we've experienced thus far. But wha what I have in mind right now is to share that a lot of businesses are digitizing their, their uh, whole operations and moving towards an online experience rather than what they had thus far, which was more of an offline experience if you think about it. For instance, one of uh, the biggest customers that came in into CloudCard during the pandemic was T-Market. This is one of the biggest grocery stores in Bulgaria if you think about it. It's a whole chain of stores. that just digitized their business and started selling online for the first time ever. And they did that based on the CloudCard platform because we are enabling 
businesses to, to digitize themselves pretty easily for the most part. And even enterprise level customers such as T-Market are, are uh, using our platforms just as, just as good. But in terms of the, the, the numbers and not talking just about customers and all that, but talking about um, the actual numbers that you said yourself in terms of statistics, uh, what we've seen thus far, it, it's a pretty drastic shift in the usage of, of e-commerce and uh, how people are used to do that in Bulgaria, for instance. Um, I believe that everybody knows who's uh, already watching this stream that uh, Bulgarians tend to use um, a payment method called cash on delivery, um, which is uh, pretty uh, predominant here on this market, on the Bulgarian market, for instance. Uh, but the problem with cash on delivery is you have a cash exchange. You know, you're you're touching people for uh, <laughs> for the same reason. Uh, of, um, uh, you know, people have 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 gotten used to do that in previous years. But this year, during the the COVID uh, start in uh, in March and April, for instance, people have drastically changed their behavior, and this behavior really we really find it mind-boggling because un up until 2019 cash on delivery was accounting for up to 85 percent of everything being purchased online was cash on delivery and the other payment methods such as you know um, leasing by tbi and other players on the market and cash or, or credit card payments uh, or card payments such as mastercard and etc were really a smaller percentage rather than these staggering 85 percent if you think about it and the change and the shift there was we were trying to change this um, behavior for bulgarians for quite a while now for the past uh, few years or so but what changed was covid really drastically shifted this and for the most part cash on delivery has lowered quite substantially even in some cases and places for uh, under the the psychological threshold of 50 percent which means that that's a huge shift. We weren't able to even move it even a, a few percent for a past five years or so, but now it's down 30 to 35 to even more than 35%. And the major winners in terms of the payment systems are again, for the most part, cards, card payments, as well as leasing a platform such as TBI uh, and the other players which are on the market in terms of, of these types of uh, um, statistics. In terms of the statistics that I'm sharing, I just want to share with you that currently CloudCard has uh, more than 8,000 active stores currently running the CloudCard platform here in Bulgaria. And um, all of these stores, we are accumulating all this data and that's why we're able to share this data with everybody. Can I ask you something? Of course. How many of these stores have been built during the pandemic uh, or as a result of the pandemic? Yeah, uh, more than 3,000. And how quickly you are um, able to uh, set up a store from scratch? Well, uh, it really depends on, on, uh, on who is actually doing the building. I mean that, for instance, after this panel, there's other colleagues of ours named Stenic who are doing uh, uh, the agency sort of approach mm. to these types of things. So their timeline differs than ours, but our platform, which is a software as a service platform, it's more or less do-it-yourself mm. platform. You can do it yourself or you can do it with the help of our team. It can happen in a, in a couple of days or a few mm -hmm. days time. You so can get your store up and running, which is pretty unheard of in the in the web development industry, if you think yeah. about it. By yeah. the way, um, yes, uh, I th this is great, actually. And uh, I would like to share what we did here in Bulgaria in partnership with uh, Viber and uh, one uh, fintech uh, company. Uh, we uh, created a Viber Society where uh, even the smallest, the micro businesses can have uh, their own communication channel and even to initiate uh, electronic payments in order to uh, sell their goods and services. And here, uh, because so far we have been talking about the inclusion of uh, small and medium enterprises uh, into a uh, digital world, but uh, it is very important that uh, the technology is uh, a tool for um, financial inclusion of people. And uh, here we are talking uh, even for people who are not so technical savvy. And I know that TBI actually have a great example of such an inclusion. Armen, would you please share yeah. your experience? 
Thank you. Uh, good morning. Or good afternoon. Good afternoon, <laughs> actually. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we, uh, as TBA, we have been, uh, our motto is that, uh, uh, used to be, and is that we are next generation digital uh, lender. Before COVID, it was, of course, a vision of the not so close future, distant future, whereby the habits of the customers would change, and we wanted to be ready for this transformation. But what the banks face, uh, during the pandem pandemia, this is this uh, phenomenon of positive discontinuity when things accelerate and when conventional ways of making business are virtually disappearing on our eyes. Uh, of course, uh, some part of it will come back after the COVID is challenged, but we know that good habits, they stay for long. Accordingly, those habits that uh, our colleague from uh, CloudCard was uh, speaking about, once people have used it because of the necessity, exactly. if that is built properly, if it is convenient, if the logistics is built properly and people do not have to pass through some hassle process in order to purchase something, that will stay forever. Of course, not with everybody, but with 85, 90% of the people users, it will stay forever. Accordingly, here we see our role as an inclusion not only of the customer, but also of our partner merchants, because we are, uh, our bu business is built around, uh, we call it merchant solutions business, whereby we have more than 4,000 traditional, mostly, merchants all around Bulgaria. And the thing is that th we have to match the speed with which they are transforming with the, way, uh, with the speed with which the customers are transforming because many of our businesses still, our partner businesses, partnerships, they don't have this opportunity to be uh, joining this. They don't maybe even know about the existence of companies like yours. Accordingly, I see that it is very important for us and we are already taking the first steps on it to make them meet, meet each other because this is not only about the ambition to change the world, but of course, and we don't have such ambition. It is just a <laughs> rational willingness to stay profitable. Because we see that uh, if before, uh, I mean, in uh, stock markets, and we s saw the valuations of the banks where it was really difficult to connect them to the real uh, business that they are doing today, it's very much profitability driven. And it is a challenge to stay profitable. And uh, the traditional habits are changing. People are driving, I, I think, this end of cash era, which will happen one day, it is just accelerating. And people prefer, I was reading some uh, statistics by uh, Ernst & Young Future uh, Consumer Index, that uh, according to the recent measurements, of course it is in the United States, but we can extrapolate uh, pretty much. I mean, there is a 7% growth in credit card utilization rate, 10% growth in uh, debit cards. I mean, 35% thir uh, uh, growth, and it is pretty t traditional uh, market in general, in contactless payments rates. I mean, people get concerned over their health. They know that the cash can potentially become a transmitter of uh, the disease. And on the other hand, they were forced during the lockdown periods to find ways to shop for their necessities, or not only the necessities, uh, in a condition where they couldn't visit the shop. Accordingly, this is important and uh, this is where we were already. We have uh, extensive uh, uh, platforms for uh, leasing over, as we call it, uh, we call it purchase finance uh, through the websites, uh, cash online. But what we did for customers, on the other hand, is that because not all customers are sufficiently technologically savvy, we have created assisted uh, processes where the customer, which is unable, for instance, due to age or maybe due to some technological restriction to finish the online application independently, we, are, we have set up a special team in call center, which is, uh, we are asking customer just to start and then we call to finish together with him. Awesome. And awesome. you do it once, you do it twice, and uh, out of 10 customers, five start using it later independently. And this is what, uh, I call it a digital experience, you know, <laughs> physical <laughs> with digital <laughs> together. <laughs> it will be something in the middle, <laughs> and then it will transform, of course, to digital, but uh, there are a lot of driving factors there. But, I mean, we, we look very hopeful. And in general, we see that approximately we saw that if the share of online uh, business in our business in Bulgaria, which is a very archaic market, as you have uh, correctly is, mentioned, is if it was uh, on the level of 10%, of the total turnover and pretty stagnating, 
right in April uh, this year, it has grown to 20%. Then after the lockdowns got eased, it went down, but not less than 18%, and now it is growing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But um, uh, thank you very much for this, and uh, I would uh, confirm that uh, actually this uh, unusual uh, way of spending and changing the habits are something which is becoming a trend, and we expect that it will um, be kept for the future. And um, thank you very much for the great example how customer care is the focus of all the businesses and uh, that we live in customer-centric uh, um, world. And uh, um, as I mentioned in the, in the beginning, uh, we are observing how customer behavior and, custom and how customer values are changing. People are not buying just to buy, they buy because of something. And uh, I believe that Eva will share with us what have inspired her uh, to um, establish this company which uh, actually uh, serves this... Um, um yeah, I, I need to take a step back <laughs> here and in, in, in just linking to the change in habits because um, e-commerce has been blooming since the pandemic, obviously, but one sector of it has not, and that's fashion, right? Because mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not a necessity and people don't go that's out, right. so whenever there is lockdown, um, what sells is uh, jumpers and t-shirts and, you know, joggers. There's exactly. People are not <laughs> buying really um, high fashion or, or any fashion for that matter. And, and some, somehow a, a very good conversation has started within the fashion industry uh, that is disrupt being disrupted at the moment anyhow, but it, it has been really facilitated by the pandemic. Um, that people have started thinking about what they actually need and do they need to buy all of these things that they're buying and you know stacking in their closets and so um, the brands kind of feel the need now to speed up this process of figuring out how they can produce more sustainable and be uh, better to the environment because um, fashion is arguably the third or the second biggest polluter to our planet and so what we, uh, what we built uh, with the Impact ID team is, um, is basically a consumer-facing um, algorithm, an API, um, that calculates the impact of every item, of every single fashion item, um, and displays it on a product page. Um, what it means is, for example, if you see this T-shirt, you will know how much carbon dioxide or water or waste it generates, if it's a circular product or not. And if it's a sustainably made product, you will see the savings that it generates. And we started with this solution um, really in this, the summer of 2020, mm -hmm. so quite fresh. But what we see is some tremendous numbers. So we see like an average of uh, e-commerce conversion rate increase of 130%, revenue up by 50% wherever there is the impact ID. And, and you see that people start thinking about, about changing their behavior and when you are able to translate the numbers because the numbers are there they've always been there you know for years people invest in in sustainability reports and and many companies are trying to be better but f to <coughs> the end consumer that's never really understandable yeah. right if i read h&m's sustainability report i will see um, what they've done on a company level but when i enter the store and look at a t-shirt those no two idea. don't do you yeah have, there is no, no link yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is actually uh, the customer uh, reaction on this? I mean, how, how you are engaging them? I mean, uh, are you working wi in partnership with some uh, institutions or you are doing this uh, by yourself? Uh, so we, for the technology part, we partner with the Hong Kong Polytechnic University with a PhD team mm -hmm. there for the data science of the tool. Uh, but we also, so we work, our customers are normally big marketplace platforms mm -hmm. or, or direct, direct to consumer brands. Uh -huh. And so the way people see our work or our API, the end consumer, when they're browsing and they go to a product page mm -hmm. um, with the product description, they will also see a couple of icons and these icons will say the CO2 impact, the water impact, mm -hmm. the waste impact and etc. Maybe If I can cut in here for course. a second, uh, I just want to say that one of the trends moving forward is this um, digital personalization, mm, sort of moving it. forward and mobile readiness for all these types of platforms that you already mentioned. And 
this thing that you have already developed right now is is a bit more information given in the hands of consumers yeah. and and basically the, the 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 you know climate conscious consumers can can browse easier using your 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 system and to actually personalize the experience for that user by you yeah, know I giving I them more information yeah basically. i think it's not only the the like climate conscious consumers uh, b because I think sustainability is moving from being this very niche kind of sector of every industry to s being something that is a status quo um, okay. because of several reasons, right? There's regulations by 2025 in the European Union, there will be very strict regulations on, on uh, garment collection of secondhand items and, and disposal because there is China is not taking trash anymore, so we don't really have <laughs> landfills to <laughs> put it in. So regulations are coming yeah. all over the place and it's not... L well, the motivation is who wins the election. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right well, now, right? I, I mean, <laughs> so the, the, I'm just saying that it's not a m moral dilemma here. The no, there is okay. an actual business problem and an actual business need, and one is regulations because businesses will need to figure out what to do with it. The other one is resources because they're running mm. out of resources, and, and by resources I mean also human resources. Because even That's even in in areas where there's cheap labor, that cheap labor is no longer cheap anymore and it's not that readily available as it used to be some time sure. ago so actually i forgot to tell something sorry for interrupting <laughs> you but um, it is uh, absolutely clear uh, yeah. what you mean and congratulations for this because uh, we at mastercard are also taking care uh, first of all about the impact of our business but also we are taking care about the environment and even this year uh, this month actually we launched uh, one uh, great initiative which is named Pricelet priceless planet. Uh, also, we are working in cooperation with similar um, startups uh, who are uh, measuring the carbon footprint of uh, purchases um, mm -hmm. which um, uh, customer uh, make. And even more, there is a possibility uh, the customer to limit its carbon uh, footprint, uh, his uh, carbon uh, footprint for a particular period of time. And if he tries to buy something on top, application says, no, it's not, it's not allowed. You are going to... Mm. Oh, that's, that's great. And yes. do you, is there like an option where people can actually offset their carbon? Of course. Okay. Of course, awesome. of course. So we have a lot of, thing to <laughs> a lot of things to discuss. I'm afraid that uh, the time is uh, 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 running. Uh, and I forgot to uh, say in the beginning that we are open to uh, respond to some questions from the public. Yes. And uh, if there are such, I would delegate this, this pleasure to Evgeny <laughs> because I don't have pleasure access. Pleasure yeah, uh, responsibility, basically. No, but no, it's uh, a yeah. pleasure to <laughs> interact with the audience. Of course, of course it is. Uh, so basically, yeah, as soon as uh, anybody has any questions, you can share them online and we're going to be able to see them and, of course, respond to them here on the panel. While we're waiting for questions, uh, uh, I want to take the last words that Vanya just said about the partnerships with, with new companies. I, I, I want to congratulate her on, on the approach and, and uh, everything that MasterCard are doing on, the mar on all markets because yeah. you're covering the globe basically, or not just here in Bulgaria. And uh, one of these new partnerships uh, is actually the partnership between CloudCard and MasterCard. Uh, in actually digitizing more businesses, which will help with the foot, the, the the footprint, which you said, the climate footprint, et, et cetera. So we're really happy to start this new partnership, and we already have one with TBI. So exactly. we're actually really trying to 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 move businesses towards digitalization and moving forward in in getting into the next era. Because as you know, people have been stuck in the in the past, uh, not just decade but millennia, while you know doing their business offline, but as the COVID has proven um, thus far, there's just um, the need to move forward with mm. all of this. I, uh, I don't have any questions thus far. Uh -huh. Perhaps anybody else can, uh, can no. cut in here? Or uh, yes. Actually, we have uh, enough time. So yeah. I just wanted to mention that you are absolutely right that uh, MasterCard is a global company and uh, is doing uh, a lot of different projects uh, in all the countries. But uh, we never lose uh, the local flavor. And actually, we are much more focused. I can confirm. Uh, <laughs> 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 Thank you for this. Uh, actually, we are not here to make compliments to each other, but these are yeah. the facts. And uh, we are always seeking uh, for 
the local impact and here I would encourage uh, the audience if not now uh, through this open channel but uh, later on to contact us any of us if you have some ideas some plans some questions some challenges which uh, Mastercard can be uh, helpful to uh, meet Armen, uh, do uh, I just wanted to say it's not uh, really directly connected to environmental impact but uh, approximately 39% of uh, respondents of one uh, very big study were saying that they are expecting the banks to uh, act responsibly. Mm. And this is really important because the ethical banking is now more important than ever. So we all know that when uh, the lockdowns were uh, declared, uh, uh, a lot of people lost their jobs. Mm. A lot of people were sent to unpaid leaves. Of course, there are legislations which are protecting them from that. But still, I mean, uh, we, uh, a lot of governments were taking measures in order to contemplate this by some uh, stimulating measures towards the consumers. And on, uh, it is really, uh, customers see that we should be the fair transmitters of those stimulus measures towards uh, the public. Because if the stimulus measures are taken on a big level and then they pass through the banks towards the pas uh, public and you know, there are ways to transmit it in such a way that nothing gets to the bottom. I mean, this is not what customers expect from us. And on an example of TBA Bank, uh, we have uh, started restructuring the facili loan facilities of our impacted borrowers approximately three weeks before the National Bank of Bulgaria required us to do so. And we feel the appreciation because, I mean, we shouldn't be like, you know, uh, Mark Twain was saying about the insurance agents, that the good insurance agent is the one which will give you the umbrella when it is shiny, but <laughs> will take it away as soon as it is yeah. raining. Uh, they <laughs> are, uh, that was the habit of the banks in 1990s. Uh, even in the beginning of the 2000s, but now I think that the responsible banking is very important because first of all it is uh, leading for to lower costs of risks and on the other hand it is the appreciation and the loyalty of the borrowers which is important today because as the earnings possibilities on the banking se sector shrink, the competition becomes more fierce and accordingly to win in this competition it's not only about the products and channels but also about the responsibility and i think this is very much uh, it can be extrapolated to any industry working here there this is what i wanted to say here i would 100% uh, agree with you and i will share what uh, my manager uh, the head of um, the general manager of uh, mastercard uh, for central and eastern Europe is saying, he is saying that uh, nowadays we are winning our customers not with brains, but with uh, but their hearts. And we, uh, we have to sell the experience, not yeah, the product. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Here's something that I can share right now, since we're sharing all these good ideas and everything. First of all, I want to congratulate TBI on, on doing this, uh, uh, you know, calling and, and not, you know, having people in person these types of uh, innovations in sort of the banking side of things because these things are really helping merchants because I'm, I'm trying to protect mm. merchant side basically. And seeing this in banks like yours, it's a tremendous win for, for all the businesses because the businesses are hit hard. I know that people are hit hard personally when yes. it comes to the, their health and everything. Small and but medium the economies, sector, yeah. the economies are, are going down fast, as you put it yourself, in other more eloquent words, if you think about it. But uh, basically, the, the whole idea of the whole thing is that, yes, banks should be helping. MasterCard is already helping. And they're helping merchants, um, mm -hmm. which, you know, need this in, in times like this. And we, as CloudCard, has also have also helped. Uh, for instance, we've done this uh, um, uh, campaign called Get Through the Hardships by Getting Online which helped more than, uh, again, 2,000 uh, merchants go online during just March and April alone. So we've seen this tremendous shift and we're all trying to help. So I congratulate you for mm. all of this that you're doing on that regard. Same from our side. Uh, do we have any questions? No, unfortunately, I have nothing. No. The, p the, is the audience <laughs> is very shy or may maybe it's a lunch time, I don't <laughs> know. Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps that's, that's it's the situation. Lunchtime. But, uh, the if we of the yeah. but if we don't uh, have any other questions, let's just conclude that uh, the technology uh, actually and uh, technology and innovations, but uh, innovation not, on, not always means uh, some science, um, science or stuff, yeah. uh, exactly or something very difficult, um, um, but uh, good organization, good, good process optimization, um, 
together with the technology can, def can definitely change the people lives the businesses lives not only the small businesses but uh, we have been um, seeing how uh, actually very big businesses are suffering uh, during that times so and for me for us at mastercard the key word here is responsibility and uh, partnership because uh, uh, there is no one no, no uh, who's who um, could uh, uh, do miracles alone but in partnership everything is possible so uh, here I would like to thank you thank you and thank the thank on the audience and take uh, and thank the organizers as well for uh, making this discussion happen and uh, keep safe and stay healthy stay healthy yeah yeah thank you